Hey, what is going on guys? So today I have another finished project to share with you all. This is my full armor HG Nobel Gundam. Uh, that was kind of the basis of my idea for it was to take the Nobel Gundam and make it a full armor version of that. Basically kind of my interpretation of what a full armor Nobel would look like sort of. So this is a project that I obviously didn't like mention anything about publicly really. I didn't uh, do any work in progress videos or anything for it. So I'll just give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what I did with this, kind of what led up to it and just kind of how I ended up getting this result here in this video as, you'll, as you're as you taking a look at the final result there. And so what happened with this was I was just kind of doing a little bit of cleanup here in my space, organizing some stuff, and I came across the HD Nobel Gundam, which I reviewed a few months back, and I was thinking, hmm, that would be a simple kit to just paint out, because I knew it was a pretty simple kit in terms of its construction and stuff, so it wouldn't really take a whole lot to paint it, and I was thinking, well, what could I do cool with it? And I thought it would be cool to kind of juxtapose the simple like petite design of the Gundam with some big massive guns on its arms. So I tried out some different things, thought about some different options. And one of the things that I considered was using the weapons from the HD full armor Thunderbolt Gundam, just taking like its armaments off its arms and putting it onto this. And that was looking pretty cool, but then ultimately what I ended up here is just with a bunch of Iron Blood Orphans HG option weapons here. So that's what these weapons are from, just HG IBO. Uh, option weapon sets so didn't really have to do a whole lot really to get these to work on the kit for the stuff the cannon and like the launcher there on like the side of the arms so just all i had to do was just drill a hole into the side of the arm plug those in it's as easy as that and the handheld ones i did have to modify the handle a little bit because the handle was a little bit too big to fit into the nobel's small hands uh, but all i had to do was just shave down the handle a little bit to get that to fit into there pretty easy really so it wasn't really a whole lot of modification required for that which is good and then uh, sea mine removal like i said the the actual nobel kit is a super easy kit to paint because it basically has no seam lines on it at all now there were a lot of seam lines on the weapons so i had to spend a lot more time uh, removing the seam lines on those but this is just a project that i just kind of had on that i was working on on the side so you know i just did a little bit here and there working on this basically until it was done and it obviously it didn't take a whole lot of time it's a pretty simple project because the main thing for me was just to make like a full armor version of this here with just adding a bunch of weapons onto the arms and i wanted to do this kind of pose and so i've got this mounted up on just a simple wood block base there and in this particular pose this is what i envisioned for this kit uh, because I thought it would kind of, still kind of really emphasize like the, the heftiness, the heaviness of these big massive weapons that she's just got all around her arms there. Uh, and then, like I said, compared to the small body of the actual Gundam. And now the other thing was just nailing down the colors for it, because I knew obviously, of course, I wanted to do custom colors, but I wasn't exactly sure uh, what colors to use. And so I was thinking about different like full armor type of colors. And as you can see here, what I ended up going with was basically just a couple of different shades of gray and orange uh, for like the main body of the kit. And for the most part, it was basically just replacing the colors. So I, I stuck with like the original placement of the colors and just replaced them. So all the parts that were originally purple on the kit are now in that darker gray, all the parts that were in the kind of like magenta pinky kind of color are now in that kind of like off-white very light gray and so on and it ended up really being one of those times where uh, I decided on the colors and I wasn't too sure about them and even as I was painting on them I was thinking I don't know if these colors are really gonna work out looking that great together and especially the placement of them I wasn't sure about it and then only once I started to get the kit back together that I realized oh, actually I think the colors worked out pretty well and now like that the, everything's done I'm actually really happy with the colors I think they came out looking really cool that orange uh, against the like multiple tones of gray there for like the armor I think just looks really cool obviously it's not the first time that anyone's ever done like orange accents on a gray kit it's a pretty tried and true uh, color scheme so I was sure that the colors would go together fine. It was just like how they would go together in this particular layout on this particular Gundam I wasn't sure of, but I think that came out really well. And then uh, for the weapons there, obviously I just used a few different shades of gray just to just kind of give those a little bit of color variance uh, among those. And then there's the hair. The hair was uh, originally done in like a fluorescent orange uh, and it was very bright fluorescent orange. And I changed it because I just thought it looked with all the orange on the mobile suit and then like this bright fluorescent orange on the hair. It was just too much orange, I think. So it needed a little like something different to differentiate that a little bit more. And it was just too much, too much fluorescent orange there on the hair. So I thought, well, I'm going to tone that down and just give it uh, spray some yellow over that. Some just character yellow. And actually, so like the V fan and like the front of the hair, like on the front of the face too, like those bits coming down on the side of the face were also in that fluorescent orange and so those I just went like to solid like character yellow and then as I was spraying that on like the back of the hair as well too I thought it'd be cool to just do it as a gradient like leave it fluorescent orange towards the ends and then just have it like coming towards the uh, yellow 
towards the front. So this ended up making that a gradient and I'm super happy with how that came out. I think that came out looking really cool. Obviously anytime you're using uh, fluorescent paints, well I don't know how obvious it is to you guys if you've ever tried it, but uh, fluorescent color is hard to really capture the proper look of them on camera. So you guys are seeing it I think probably pretty well, but it, 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 I can assume based on how it's going to look on camera, it looks a little bit different in real life. Uh, but. I'm super happy with how that gradient came out. I think it ends up looking really cool. It's it's orange like like the rest of the orange on the mobile suit, but it's different enough with that like yellow to fluorescent orange gradient on there. Uh, just looks really cool, I think. So obviously you guys can let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. But that is pretty much it. As far as like the markings and everything goes, it's got like a, the big marking there on the side of the thigh, and that's kind of really about it. I didn't put any like EFSF markings or anything like that on it just because uh, number one, there wasn't really any good place for that. The shoulders are quite small where you would typically place that like on the front of the shoulder. It's quite small there and like the front skirts as well too. So I ended up just thinking, well, I just don't really particularly need that. So I just uh, decided not to use any big like a faction marking logo or anything like that on that. And so it's basically just all those generic caution markings, mostly, I think just almost entirely, just stuff from H HIQ, except for like the marking logo there on the thigh and then one on like the sort of backpack there. Other than that, all yeah, just uh, HIQ markings there, either in white or orange and gray, depending on what uh, color of armor they're on. So then there is also the gold band on the thigh as well too, which is another thing that I wasn't sure what to do with. Uh, as I was going through preparing the kits, uh, I thought about just sanding that off, and I thought, well, I'll just leave it on there, and you know, maybe I'll paint it, or maybe I'll just not like paint it a separate color, just have the thigh just all white, and it'll just have that kind of raised detail on there or something. And so once I got through all the painting process, and even actually after I'd already finished the panel lining as well too, I was still, that part was just still solid, like off-white. I wasn't sure what color I wanted to do with that. I didn't want to have it like the pink band like it is on the original kit, but I ended up thinking, well, maybe just something uh, different and just have it just be gold maybe so uh, just masked that painted that gold and I'm really happy with how that came out as well too so I think that makes a really nice little uh, just color accent there having that one band of gold on the thigh I think looks really cool and if I were to summarize this kit I think that's a good uh, way to go about it would be to say that this is just a series of happy accidents basically it was an idea that I thought would be pretty cool something that I just wanted to try you know it wasn't like a serious like GBWC entry that I'm gonna be spending months and months on just a fun simple build which is the kind of build that I personally really love and enjoy to do on HD kits like this and so you know I wasn't sure how the colors were going to turn out I wasn't sure how the kit overall was really going to look I wasn't sure like uh, how the gold was going to look on the leg or the fluorescent orange hair and things like that and so um, I think all these things I just kind of uh, trusted my instincts I guess as much as you can and then uh, ended up coming out looking really cool and ends up being a, a kit that I really love I really love how this ends uh, ended up looking uh, of course, again, let me know your guys' thoughts. I'm always open to your guys' uh, critique, positive, negative, whatever you guys had to say about it. But I ended up really liking this. I think it looks really super cool. I'm really happy with how this came out. So again, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. And thank you so much for all of your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that is greatly appreciated. Uh, I love doing just fun, cool projects like this. And I wouldn't be able to do that without the support of USA Gundam Store. Again, so guys, do check out the link to USA Gundam Store down there in the video description below. Uh, you can check out this kit, other kits, all the HD Iron Blood Orphans options kits. I know those are actually kind of, uh, maybe some of them are, are hard to find at this point. I know some of them haven't been reprinted for a while, but uh, all kinds of stuff you can check out there on the site. You can use my coupon code there, Zacharelius10, to save 10% off everything on the site there as well, too. You guys know that, but just, again, I wouldn't be able to do fun, cool projects like this and share them with you guys if it wasn't for their support. So do show them some love. I really appreciate that, you guys. And so, as always, I hope you all having a great day. Thank you so much again for your support. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all later. Bye, guys.